Pro Evolution Soccer. It was the game to play if you wanted something that resembled real football in a video game. For years and years, release upon release, it was the place to be, the game to play, if you wanted to play something that resembled real football. But, like all good things, they come to an end, or they become bad. Some things recover, some things don't. So, we're going to talk about what I think is the rise and fall of Pro Evolution Soccer as a game series. Disclaimer, these are just opinions in this video. Please be respectful if you disagree, that's absolutely fine, but respect the fact that these are my opinions. Post down in the comments below, I would love to know what your feelings are on the subject of Pro Evolution Soccer. So I'm going to start with ISS Pro on the Sony PlayStation. This wasn't the first ISS game that I played by any means. That goes to ISS Deluxe on the Super Nintendo on the 16-bit machines. ISS Pro was absolutely fantastic. At the time, I'd been playing FIFA 98, and then to play ISS Pro, the games just felt so different. I liked FIFA 98, but ISS Pro was fantastic. It was such a great game to play. It was enjoyable, it was fun, but it also required more thought to actually open up teams and score goals, even on a Sony PlayStation game. The only thing that let down ISS Pro was the commentary, which was god awful. But that doesn't affect the gameplay. The gameplay of ISS Pro was absolutely fantastic. The follow-up to ISS Pro was ISS Pro 98. Now this is where I need to mention that there are completely separate ISS games and ISS Pro games that were released on the Nintendo 64. These games are very different to what you played on the Sony PlayStation. The gameplay was very different, it was more geared towards an arcadey sort of football gaming experience rather than the more realistic feel of ISS Pro on the PlayStation. ISS Pro 98, I played a demo. It had Brazil versus France, the World Cup finalists from 1998, and I kept replaying and replaying that demo. It was a refined version of ISS Pro with some fantastic improvements in the gameplay. It felt so much better to play. It felt refined. Again, you had to give it thought. Again, it was difficult. But scoring goals was satisfying on ISS Pro 98. It was a brilliant follow-up to ISS Pro. Then, it was the big one. ISS Pro Evolution. This game consumed so many hours of my gaming life back then. The Master League. It was just such a great mode. Me and a good friend of mine spent hours, even years after ISS Pro Evolution was originally released, on a Master League save, which I still have. We spent so many hours on that. It was just so, so good. Such an addictive game. Again, some improvements over ISS Pro 98, its predecessor, and just such a great, great game. So, so good. It was one you had to play. Again, commentary was a bit of a letdown, but it's not the gameplay. The gameplay was fantastic in ISS Pro Evolution. Then there was ISS Pro Evolution 2. Now, for some reason, I didn't really play this game as much as ISS Pro Evolution. But from what I can tell, going back and playing it again now, it's a refined version of ISS Pro Evolution, and in some ways is a better game than ISS Pro Evolution. You've now got two divisions in Master League, so the possibility of promotion and relegation is there. What a great game ISS Pro Evolution and ISS Pro Evolution 2 were, and they consumed so many hours of my gaming life back then. With the next generation, the PS2, we got Pro Evolution Soccer. Now this was a graphical leap compared to ISS Pro Evolution 2 on the Sony PlayStation. You could see the power of the PS2. The game looked absolutely fantastic. It was levels ahead of what we saw on the original PlayStation. Gameplay-wise, it was fairly similar to what we've been used to in ISS Pro Evolution and ISS Pro Evolution 2, but it was still a very good game nonetheless. Then we hit what I think is a bit of a dodgy PES release, Pro Evolution Soccer 2. Now, back in the day, I did like Pro Evolution Soccer 2, and I did spend a number of hours playing a Master League season on that game. But there were just some weird things about the game compared to its predecessor. It felt a bit more stiff, a bit more sort of on rails, a bit sluggish. But it was still a very good game. It still required you to think 
about how you were going to play the game, how you were going to open up teams and score goals. It was absolutely fantastic. Pro Evolution Soccer 2 might have been the first sort of iffy and dodgy PES release from my point of view, but it was still a good game nonetheless. So let's hear what a good friend of mine and fellow YouTuber, the Chorizo Machine, has to say about Pro Evolution Soccer. Pro Evolution Soccer. PES. International Superstar Soccer. ISS. I refuse to call it eFootball. The game has no soul now. I won't let it tarnish the good memories I've got of the old games. So, speaking of the old games, where did it all begin for me? A little background story for you first. I grew up playing football games on the ZX Spectrum and then the Amiga. I was obsessed with the sport anyway, so to be able to play it in video game form, or computer game form as it was back then, turned into a real hobby of mine. I'm not exactly sure when I first played Pro Evo, I'm pretty sure it was when I borrowed a game from a kid who lived a few streets away. He didn't even like football, but somehow owned ISS on the Super Nintendo. Anyway, I didn't know anything about the game's history, I just played it, I loved it and I couldn't believe how different it felt compared to the other football games that I had been playing before. After that I played ISS on the N64, again I loved it, but I was still messing around with FIFA games as well, for whatever reason. But then that day came, I bought ISS Pro Evolution Soccer 2 for the PlayStation. What about ISS Pro Evo 1 I hear you all ask? I'm ashamed to say it, but I didn't play that game back then, I have played it since and it is very good. But the second game is where the Pro Evo series truly started for me. Bloody hell that game. At the time I was living with a guy who was a lot older than me. He loved his football but he wasn't keen on video games whatsoever. But guess what, he would play ISS Pro Evo 2 with me until the early hours. That game sucked in everyone who crossed its path. I know that sounds a little weird and sinister, but it's so true, in my case anyway. Every time I'd have friends visit, they'd end up playing that all night. There'd be five or six of us all huddled around a small TV, playing international tournaments. My team was always Italy. From there, I didn't buy FIFA again until probably 2006-ish. And then we had Pro Evolution Soccer 3. Wow, just wow. A new engine, a fantastic game. Again, I sunk so many hours into Pro Evolution Soccer 3. It was fantastic and it is still a game that I can go back to to this very day. An absolutely fantastic game. So, so good and worth checking out. Pro Evolution Soccer 4, I did actually play. I had it on the original Xbox and it was a very, very good game, but it wasn't one that I spent too many hours with, despite the fact that it was still a good game. I still preferred PES 3, so I was going back to that game, but Pro Evolution Soccer 4 was a very, very good game. It was definitely worth playing. Then we reach what some people would call the pinnacle of Pro Evolution Soccer. Pro Evolution Soccer 5. Wow. This game was absolutely fantastic. Again, more tweaks to the gameplay, more tweaks to the AI. The game was brilliant. It was the definition of a thinking man's football game. You had to think, you had to adjust your tactics, you had to adjust your playing style, depending on your opposition and what you were coming up against. It was absolutely brilliant. Let's hear what the chorizo machine makes of PES 5. In PES land, when I talk about the series at its best, I use the phrase the Pro Evo Quintet, and by that I mean Pro Evolution Soccer 1 to 5. And my favourite in that group of games is PES 5, followed closely by PES 3. Some would argue that PES 6, the PS2 version, not the dodgy Xbox 360 so called next gen version, should be part of that group, but I can't say because I've never played enough of it to give it the deserved praise. PES 5 was a special game. I spent hundreds of hours with it, offline Master League, online against randoms, plus it was the first time that I actually installed an option file. I owned the Xbox version of Pro Evo 5 and used some USB device, which name escapes me, to install a file the community had made. So I had a Premier League with proper kits and team names. I was made up. 
I was also addicted, like insanely hooked on that game. It was that good. After that, the series kind of nosedive for me. Then we move to what I think is a bit of a strange release. We'd started the next generation with the Xbox 360 at the end of 2005. Konami released Pro Evolution Soccer 6 on the Xbox 360. But they'd scale back edit mode, so most of what you did to make your unlicensed teams look reasonable, like their real-life counterparts, by editing kits, sponsors, etc., badges, you couldn't do that in Pro Evolution Soccer 6 on the Xbox 360. That had all been stripped away. Gameplay-wise, Pro Evolution Soccer 6 on the 360 was decent, but it had a very, very weird trait. All too often you'd take a shot and the ball would balloon over the crossbar. It was incredibly strange. That didn't happen on the PS2 version of Pro Evolution Soccer 6, which I also played. It happened a lot on the Xbox 360 version. Also graphically, Pro Evolution Soccer 6 on Xbox 360 looks weird. It doesn't look like much of a step up from Pro Evolution Soccer 6 on PlayStation 2. It looks a bit strange, I've got to say. But I still spent a fair amount of time with it in Master League, playing lots of seasons. It was really, really good nonetheless. And then we reach what I think is the darkest days of Pro Evolution Soccer. The PlayStation 3 was released, so we were now well and truly into the next generation of video game systems. Pro Evolution Soccer 2008, I can sum it up as simply as this. It is the worst iteration of Pro Evolution Soccer, or ISS, that I have ever played, full stop. It is awful. It looks awful. It looks bad. The ball physics are awful. The shooting is absolutely abysmal. It just looks, plays and feels horrendous. It is such a bad game. I'm not going to comment on every game, but I do need to touch on PES 2008. Some people seem to love that, but I absolutely hated it. The ball looks like a massive blue marble to me. And at that time, FIFA was actually pretty good, so I was playing that. I kind of lost interest in PES. It felt like the developers were out of ideas and the magic had been lost somewhere along the way. The problem was, for release upon release, Konami couldn't seem to shake off the bad that was in PES 2008. We went through PES 2009, which wasn't much better. PES 2010, where it looked as though a new graphics engine was being brought into the fray. Still not much better in the gameplay front. The shooting was still a big issue. The game still felt a bit clunky and a bit archaic, and it just was not very good to play. All of a sudden, Konami's football game was behind EA's football game, because at the time, FIFA 08 was really good. FIFA 09 was absolutely fantastic. FIFA 10 was also really good as well. In fact, Konami didn't really, in my personal opinion, and in the opinion of Chorizo Machine, they didn't start to get the right formula again until Pro Evolution Soccer 2013, which both Chorizo Machine and myself played on the Xbox 360. That introduced Stadium Editor, which unusually was removed from that point onwards. It was very weird that they took away what was a very good feature. You could create stadiums for teams that weren't licensed to try and make a stadium that looked something like their real-life stadium. The gameplay was much improved with PES 2013. It felt good. The ball physics seemed better. The passing was really good. The movement was good. My only main complaint with PES 2013 was the shooting. Normal shots, there just wasn't much variation in the normal shots. You could score similar types of goals far too often, and if you knuckleballed it, which was a technique that Cristiano Ronaldo would often use for powerful long-range drives, you could score goals most of the time with a knuckleball shot. It was really, really sketchy with the shooting. But it was a very good game, and one that I did sink in some Master League seasons, because it was a good game. But then PES 2013 arrived. That game was so... So good. I'd say it was underrated. Not just as a game, but the entire package. There was the official Champions League license to begin with. 
It had, in my opinion, the best Master League any Pro Evo game has ever had. It had a stadium editor, which I spent far too much time with instead of playing what was a fine version of video game football. Also, every La Liga club was licensed and we even got to play at all of their official stadiums. I was made up, I was in love with Pez again. But it wouldn't last long. Pez 2014 was ambitious, so I'll give Konami credit for that, but it was very bare bones and the best way to describe the game is wonky. Of course it was the first time we saw Pez on the Fox engine, but I think the best thing about that title was the fact that we could have custom soundtracks. <laughs> Um, yeah, the game, it wasn't very good. After that, all of the PES games of this generation, in my opinion, have been pretty crap. Apart from PES 2017, I still enjoy that game and will play it in short bursts when I'm craving some Master League action. But the series is catered towards my club now and I've got no interest in that mode whatsoever. So, sorry to end this on a bit of a downer, guys, but... They are my memories with Pez. Let's remember the good times, because they were good times. And we can still play the classic games to this day. No one can change that. I want to thank the Chorizo Machine for sitting down and spending time recording his thoughts that have been used throughout this video alongside mine. Pez 2014, new engine, the Fox engine. An absolute disaster. One of the first YouTube videos on my channel was of a Pro Evolution Soccer 2014 goalkeeping massive mistake, which basically just sums up PES 2014 for me. It was a broken, clunky, horrid mess. It really was. Konami had taken steps backwards once again with a new engine. There were some glimmers of hope with PES 2015 and PES 2016 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. They were both very, very good games in places, still let down, in my opinion, by the AI and the shooting. Both of these were still a long way off what we'd experienced in the PS2 glory days. And EA's FIFA games continued to gather pace. In fact, PES, when we got to PES 2019, that's where I started to like the series a bit more again. But the same issues I've highlighted with the clunkiness, the sluggishness, the AI, trying to play against the AI on the hardest difficulty is a bit of a joke, in all honesty. The difficulty before is too easy. You'll work out ways of scoring goals every time. Then you take it up to the top level, and it's ridiculously hard. The AI will score a cheap goal past you, and often you'll lose games and wonder why you lost that game. PES 2020 continued that trend. We still had the same old issues that we'd experienced with other PES games. It was clunky. It felt archaic. It looked like an old game now. It didn't look particularly good on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Shooting was still an issue for me. Scoring goals wasn't satisfying. Shots weren't varied enough. The gameplay just felt stale and all those issues started to come back from previous PES releases. But what's interesting, PES 2021, which was a season update instead of a full release of the game, patched some of the gameplay. It feels a bit more responsive. It feels a bit better than PES 2020. And bear in mind, this is just a season update. And Konami have done this, hopefully, so they can focus all their efforts on PES 2022 for the next generation systems that are with us now. Will they bring us back to the glory days? Will PES do what it used to do to us on the PS2? Those amazing Master League matches. That awesome feeling of trying to master the game and having to think about every single thing you did when putting together a move. Will we be back there? Or is it going to be a continuation of what we've had since PES 2008? PES has never truly recovered from that 2008 game, which was awful. And it pains me to say it, but I'm sceptical as to whether it ever will rise again. Thank you for watching.